A historic day in the NFC North, and it's time for the Lions to take this division over. Seriously, let's do it. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here we go, everybody. Matt Terry with you. It's a Monday edition of Locked On Lions on the Locked On Podcast Network, Monday, April 24th, and a Tuesday, April 25th. Thanks for checking us out. It is your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen and watching us and subscribing on YouTube for free on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Coming up today, Aaron Rodgers' trade from Green Bay to the Jets is now official. It's out there. Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport, the whole world's got it out there. But Aaron Rodgers is officially now a New York Jet. That means the division is wide open. We got to talk about it on a historic day here today on Locked On Lions. Plus, folks, we're three days from the draft. The draft is Thursday night, 8 o'clock, Friday night at 7, Saturday at noon. We got to get you ready. A little mock draft Monday. We'll do that coming up with a mock draft from the uh, draftnetwork.com, our last mock draft Monday before uh, the real deal this coming Thursday. A little momentum as well for a cornerback for Detroit at six. We'll get into that as well today right here on Locked On Lions. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. You can follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks at Locked On Lions on Twitter, the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page as well. And as I said before, Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe. We appreciate you doing that. All right. So here we are on the Monday before the draft, three days away from draft day. And yes, the New York Jets have finally consummated the trade with the Green Bay Packers to get Aaron Rodgers away from Green Bay, and the Jets now have their quarterback. According to Adam Schefter from ESPN and Ian Rappaport from NFL Network, there will be a pick swap. So the Jets get Aaron Rodgers, pick number 15 in the first round, and a 2023 fifth-round pick. The Packers get the number 13 pick now moving up two spots. Green Bay also gets a second-round pick, number 42, a sixth-round pick, a conditional 2024 second round pick that could be a first round pick next year if Rodgers plays 65% of the snaps. So basically, the Jets are giving up a lot here to get Aaron Rodgers. They're going to give up a pick swap in the first round, a couple of uh, picks up there, a second round pick, and a possible future first round pick next year all to get their quarterback. Now, I think that's a big hole. But let me say this about the Lions fans today that are saying, oh, I wanted another shot at Aaron Rodgers. Oh, that this sucks. No, Lions fans should be celebrating. All right, Aaron Rodgers has been a thorn in your behind for years. All right, going back to the the Hail Mary at Ford Field years ago to Richard Rodgers. Nobody knows if Jordan loves this is a nobody knows if the Packers are going to be any good with a new quarterback. Aaron Rodgers, while flawed, while regressing, while a bit of a diva, while a bit of a weirdo, everything you want to throw out there about Aaron Rodgers, the guy could really play, and he owned the Lions for years, for years. So if you're sitting here today going, "Oh man, I really wanted Rodgers to stay so I could beat him again," Aaron Jordan Love could be terrible. We don't know anything about Jordan Love and if he could play. And if Jordan Love were really, really good, wouldn't he have played already? Wouldn't the Packers have finally got out from underneath the Aaron Rodgers cloud? So we'll see. But now the opportunity is there for this franchise here in Detroit, down at 222 Rod Wood Drive, to make a statement, to go for it, and to go get this division right here, right now. You're going to have an unproven commodity at the most important position in Green Bay. You're going to have a team in Minnesota that won a lot of 
three-point games, one-score games last year that have, have, have lost a good chunk of their defense, still questionable uh, up front on the offensive and defensive lines, and have a quarterback right now in the last year of his contract in Kirk Cousins. Now, they still have Justin Jefferson. They still have Dalvin Cook, Hawkinson. I get it. All right, Daniil Hunter. They, they're, they're still going to be fine. But the Lions led the Packers in all, for all but, what, 40 seconds of last year's two games? And the Bears, while a lot of people nationally are lathering up and that Bears butter, I'm not. They're still a few years away. Let me see Justin Fields throw the football successfully before we start crowning Chicago. Big historic day today and a huge opportunity for this franchise here, your Detroit Lions, our Detroit Lions, to make a run at this division. The talent level has been upped. The ante has been upped. The bar has been raised. You got a successful offense with a really good offensive coordinator coming back. You've got a head coach that everybody's rallying behind. You've upgraded at running back. All right. Wide receiver, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But you're going to have Jamison Williams at least healthy when he gets back from his gambling suspension in week seven. You're feeling good about that offensive line. The defense is so much better on paper. The cornerback room is tremendous now. You've got a good uh, an all all pro punter. You got a kicker. You're going into the season with in Badgley that at least you know can make some some kicks after the last two years where you went into the season not knowing what you had at that position. A lot of momentum, and now it's time for the Lions to go win this division. Aaron Rodgers is now officially gone from Green Bay. There's no excuses. I get it. Minnesota's a good team. They're not bad. But they were really lucky and fortunate last year in a lot of games. Go get it. This is exciting. Aaron Rodgers is gone. You should be celebrating this. Bye. Deuces, whatever you want to say. So I'm excited about it. I think it's a great chance for the Lions uh, to go in this division. I know they're the betting favorites now in Vegas, whatever you want to take that with a grain of salt, whatever. But man, this is a historic day in this division. It is. It's wide open. The opportunity is, is there for the Lions. Let's take advantage of it, man. I'm excited for Detroit. All right, let's do a little mock draft Monday. Nick Baumgartner from TheAthletic.com is going to join us tomorrow. Nick uh, has been all over the draft and what he thinks the Lions are going to do. But we will do mock draft Monday and some momentum all of a sudden for a cornerback at six. I will explain coming up next. First, we got to tell you about BetterHelp. Locked on Lions is today sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're getting to know yourself, it can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. That's why you could use a therapist. And you want to talk to somebody that's reliable. You want to go online and find that person so you don't have to drive somewhere. You can do all of that at BetterHelp.com slash locked on. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding Sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. BetterHelp is great. It's easy to use. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely done online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash locked on. All right, it is mock draft Monday time. The last mock draft that we're going to go through here on Locked on Lions, unless something is crazy tomorrow or Wednesday. But our friends at the draftnetwork.com put out their latest mock draft last night. Uh, it was written this week by Jamie Eisner. Here we go. Carolina, Bryce Young. Yawn. We know that's happening. 
Houston trades out of number two to Minnesota in this mock draft. And the Vikings take Will Levis. Wow. Arizona Cardinals stay at three, take Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. Colts at number four, take Anthony Richardson, the quarterback from Florida. Seahawks at five, grab Will Anderson, the edge rusher from Alabama. So, no Wilson, no Anderson for the Lions at six. I would trade out here if I was Detroit, which is what I tried to do in the locked on mock draft that many of you are destroying me over for taking Kalijah Kansi at six, but we'll see. By the way, again, if you missed the locked on mock draft, I took Kansi, I took Miles Murphy, and I traded up uh, to 29 to take Osiris Torrance. I traded 48 and 55 to go get Torrance at 29. So that's what I did. But again, it's how the, the board went. I wouldn't take Kalijah Kansi at six if Will Anderson or Tyree Wilson were there. At number six in this mock draft, Jamie writes, Devon, uh, Devin Witherspoon, cornerback, cornerback from Illinois. Quote, I really do believe general manager Brad Holmes when he says he doesn't feel pressure to draft a quarterback right now. Jared Goff played perfectly fine last season. I think the Lions will look to add instant starters with their first round picks instead. Devin Witherspoon played a lot of man coverage in college and the Lions played a ton of man coverage last season. Consider Witherspoon a plug and play starter. Again, I ask this question. And again, I'm not ripping on Jamie who wrote this, but Devin Witherspoon's not going to start if he's on the Lions. The Lions signed Emmanuel Mosley, Cam Sutton, and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, and they have Jerry Jacobs and Will Harris. If you're drafting Devin Witherspoon at six, it's for next year, not this year. He'll play this year, but you're not bumping Gardner-Johnson. You're not bumping, bumping Sutton. Mosley's getting $5 million or whatever, and is a good player. And is a proven corner in this league. So plug and play starter, I don't know where he would play. Again, you know, mocking Witherspoon to the Lions, I get it. You can never have enough corners. But people seem to forget what Brad Holmes did in free agency already. I would not see Witherspoon starting. That's just me. Jalen Carter goes eight to the Falcons, by the way in this mock draft. C.J. Stroud doesn't go until number 11 to Tennessee. I have a hard time thinking the Colts would pass up C.J. Stroud for Anthony Richardson, but I could be wrong. Uh, at number 18 in this mock draft from the draftnetwork.com and Jamie Eisner, the Detroit Lions select Kalijah Kansi, defensive lineman from Pitt. That's my guy, you guys know that. Quote, this is a very popular, uh, popular pick right now and it's easy to draw the connections. Kalijah Kansi fills an area of need for the Lions, and general manager Brad Holmes was instrumental in Aaron Donald going to the Rams when he was coming out of Pitt. While Kansi isn't Donald, could Holmes see enough to make this selection? I don't need to explain this one to you guys anymore, do I? I could see this happening. Kansi at 18, I could see this happening. Brad Holmes loves D linemen. Brad Holmes loves guys with a motor. Athletic. Cansey fits the bill. I, I truly believe he's going to be a lion. I don't know when. I don't know where. I don't know how. I just see it. Brad, uh, Dan Campbell talked a few weeks ago at the owners' meetings about man crushes. And, oh, yeah, I got man crushes on some players. I just think this is the fit. A little bit undersized, I get it. Is he great against the run? Has some issues with missed tackles? Sure. But I see this guy fitting here. Is it more realistic at 18 than what I did in the in the lockdown mock draft at six? Of course. Of course. But I see that as being, you know, you're grabbing two big pieces for your defense for the future in this mock draft. No question about it. So there is that. Um, any other surprises in this mock? Not really. Michael Mayer, the tight end from Notre Dame, going to Jacksonville at 24. Quentin Johnston, the wide receiver from TCU, going 23 to the Texans. You got Zay Flowers coming off the board at 20. Jordan Addison. And we said this the other day, and it bears repeating. Now that Jamison Williams is placing bets inside 222 Las Vegas Boulevard on other sports and is suspended, the Lions are going to need another wide receiver. Quintez Cephas' career with the Lions is over. Excuse me. Sneeze. 
And um, Jamison Williams is out six games. So the Lions at some point here are going to need to grab a young receiver. It's going to be in the draft. It's just a matter of what day and at what number. So it's become a need. Marvin Jones on a one-year deal. Veteran player. Great to have him back. Uh, Raymond, Khalif Raymond on a one-year deal. You're going to need a receiver for the future in this draft. I just don't know when. All right. Jaden Reed from Michigan State intrigues me big time. Big time. Had a huge senior bowl. Jim Nagy loves him. We'll see if Jaden Reed could come here, but it wouldn't be until maybe late second, third round. There's a lot of receivers in this draft. You could get a good one later on. All right, coming up next, buzz about Spoon. We will do that right here on Locked On Lions. Locked On Lions, your team every day. A couple of shout-outs. Matty Style, big uh, viewer and listener to the podcast. Thanks, Matt, for watching each and every day and checking us out. And the great Colin Eads as well. I've gotten Colin into the pod. He's a Locked On Lions P1 right now. So shout-out to uh, Colin as well. All right, so Albert Breer, uh, SI.com Monday morning quarterback earlier today on Twitter. I could find this. Albert Breer says, quote, two guys I think the NFL is higher on than all the people pumping up two mock drafts per day. Illinois cornerback Devin Witherspoon, Ohio State offensive tackle Paris Johnson. Breer writes, either could go as high as three. You think the Arizona Cardinals are taking Devin Witherspoon at three? And I see both as pretty locked in to go inside the top 10. More in here at Monday Morning Quarterback. You go to MMQB and check that out at SI.com. So there it is. Another Now, number one, Albert Breer has mocked and has talked about Devin Witherspoon to the Lions for weeks. He's talked about how he sees the Lions as a fit for Witherspoon. Now, apparently, Witherspoon has leapfrogged Christian Gonzalez as the number one corner. And Breer is saying there's no way he gets out of the top 10. No way. That does put him in prime position to go at six. Again, I will say, while Devin Witherspoon is a physical corner, while he can play the pass, play the run, really good football player, for this season, 2023, where the Lions, as I just said earlier, are going for it, where is he going to play? How is he going to get on the field? That's my question. No, I'm not saying Jerry Jacobs and Will Harris have to play ahead of Devin Witherspoon. I'm not saying Savion Smith and Chase Lucas have to play ahead of Devin Witherspoon. If Devin Witherspoon's really good, he'll play. But Cam Sutton was signed to a massive free agent deal, and he's ready to be your number one corner. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is a number one corner and a, a, a hybrid amoeba, maybe not number one corner, number two corner, hybrid safety slash corner that has to be on the field. He's a ball hawk. Emmanuel Mosley is going to be playing for a long-term contract. And before he got hurt last year in San Francisco, he's a legit starter. So while Breer and others have Witherspoon going very high, maybe even to Detroit at six, how is Devin going to get on the field here? Again, players get hurt. People get hurt. Uh, teams split four wide sometimes. Maybe you're going to need Witherspoon, dime, nickel, whatever. All right? Linebacker comes off the field. Maybe there's only one linebacker out there on a third and 12. Then Witherspoon would play. But I don't think your number six pick is just for this year is going to be somebody that is a dime back or nickel back. I could be 100% wrong. Brad Holmes could say, we'll find a place for him on the field. Maybe a man crush that Dan Campbell's talking about is with this one. I don't know. But it's obvious, according to Breer, NFL people love him. But again, I always was of the philosophy with Brad Holmes. Holmes views corners. He obviously valued them in free agency. But the only one that got a long-term deal was Sutton. And I think Holmes values pass rushers and getting to the quarterback. And then that will, in turn, make your cover guys better. 
That is Mondays, Locked On Lions. Nick Baumgartner, Athletic.com, college and NFL writer. Draft Nick will join us tomorrow. Thursday, we will have a show after the draft. Friday night as well, after the draft. Um, Thanks for checking us out on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.